In this video, I'm going to walk you through the steps associated with conducting a mediation analysis. I'm going to assume that you've already watched a video relevant to concepts and terms in a mediation because I'm going to walk through some of this fairly quickly, assuming that you have exposure to that material. So first, I'm going to walk you through the steps in a generic sense associated with conducting a mediation analysis with one mediator. And then I'm going to go through the example with you step by step, actually getting the results for each step. So relatively briefly, here are the steps. First, step one, estimate the total effect between x and y. That is going to be between the independent variable and the dependent variable. And I ultimately want to compare this total effect with the direct effect of interest that is going to be estimated in the mediation model. This is not the mediation model. This is just the total effect being estimated. And I can do that easily with a bivariate regression. Step two, estimate the direct effect between x and m, the independent variable and the mediator. Now that is this term over here, a, x and m. I need to estimate that direct effect. You could consider this a total effect as well, but I usually refer to it as a direct effect. And the way you can estimate that is with a bivariate regression. Again, just using the independent variable as a predictor of the mediator. This is an easy type of statistical analysis to conduct. Next, step 3a, and I call it 3a because there's a 3a and a 3b, and each step is essentially conducted at the same time, and I'll explain in a second. So you need to estimate the direct effect between x and y. That is the primary direct effect of interest here, the effect of the independent variable on the dependent variable. And how can I estimate this? Well, you can estimate it in a multiple regression where you include the independent variable and the mediator as predictors of the dependent variable. That is how you're going to get this unstandardized beta weight or standardized beta weight, depending on the approach you take. Step 3b, estimate the direct effect between m and y. So estimate this b, which again can be estimated in the multiple regression where you have x and m as predictors of y. So really, the brunt of the analysis is really just one bivariate regression where you have x predicting m, and then you run a multiple regression where you have x and m predicting y. And that is how you can get each one of these three coefficients and the standard errors in order to estimate the indirect effect for statistical significance. That's step four. And a lot of people use the Sobel test, and I'll show you how to do that. And that's going to require a calculator, either from a web page or possibly syntax in SPSS. You can also estimate it through bootstrapping, and I'll show you both methods. OK, so now I'm going to go through the steps with an example. And that example is a study where a researcher hypothesizes that the effect between self-oriented perfectionism and positive affect may be mediated by flourishing. And so the independent variable here is x, which is self-oriented perfectionism. y is the dependent variable, positive affect. And m is the mediator, flourishing. So what does that look like in the model? We have x, self-oriented perfectionism. We have y, positive affect. And then we have m, flourishing. And with these variables and these coefficients that need to be estimated, we can conduct a mediation analysis with the simplicity of conducting one bivariate regression and one multiple regression. And with those analyses, we can estimate the direct effect, C. That's the primary direct effect of interest. And the indirect effect, A times B. Now before getting into that bivariate regression and the multiple regression that serve as input into the mediation model, you want to estimate the total effect to see if there's even any point in conducting the mediation analysis. And that is represented with this basic bivariate regression model where I have self-oriented perfectionism predicting positive affect. And that is conducted with a bivariate regression between x and y. So let me do that now. Analyze regression linear and put self-oriented perfection into block one of one and positive affect into the dependent variable and click OK. And go straight to the coefficients table. And here I've got the unstandardized beta weight of 0.102 and it's statistically significant. And the standardized beta weight is equal to 0 0.140. So that is step one conducted. I've estimated the total effect and it's statistically significant so I can carry on. Step two, 
direct effect of X on M, and that is self-oriented perfectionism predicting flourishing. This is a key coefficient required for the estimation of the indirect effect, and that can be done very easily in a bivariate regression. So analyze, regression, linear, self-oriented perfectionism stays in the independent variable box, take out positive affect, and put flourish into the dependent box, and click OK. Scroll down to the last table, coefficients. Here's the unstandardized beta weight, 0.197, and it's also statistically significant, and the standardized beta weight is 0 0.190. What I need, though, are these two values. I need the unstandardized beta weight, and I need the unstandardized standard error. And I'm going to put those values into this slide here. So A equals 0.197, and the standard error is equal to 0 0.052. I'm going to need these values in order to conduct the Sobel test that is to test the statistical significance of the indirect effect. So A equals 0.197. That's very easy to estimate. It's just a bivariate regression. Now I make mention of it as a direct effect. It's not the primary direct effect of interest. It's really just the coefficient I need to estimate the indirect effect. Next, step 3A and 3B. I need to conduct a multiple regression with self-oriented perfectionism and flourishing as the independent variables and positive affect as the dependent variable, and I'm going to be able to estimate B and C. Now right here, B is a direct effect, not of interest. It's not really of particular interest because I just need it in order to estimate the indirect effect, whereas C is the direct effect of primary interest. So if this is statistically significant, it will support the notion that there's a direct effect of self-oriented perfectionism onto positive affect. Now there's a curved arrow here because this is a multiple regression, and in multiple regression, the predictive variables are only correlated with each other. There's no direct effect between these two variables. So let me conduct that multiple regression. Easy enough. Analyze, regression, linear, self-oriented perfectionism. I need to take flourish out of the dependent variable box and put it in the independent variable box. And now I need to put positive affect into the dependent variable box and click OK. And I scroll down, coefficients, I've got the last pieces of information I need in order to estimate the statistical significance of the indirect effect. 0 0.017 for self-oriented perfectionism. 0 0.017. And the standard error was equal to 0 0.030. 0 0.030. And I also need the flourish unstandardized beta weight and standard error. 0 0.430. 0 0.430 and a standard error of 0 0.028. All right, so now I've got all the terms required in order to estimate the indirect effect as well as test the indirect effect for statistical significance. Before I do, I'm just going to point out that Self-oriented perfectionism, the unstandardized beta weight of 0 0.017, is not statistically significant. P equal 0.573. Therefore, there is no statistically significant direct effect between self-oriented perfectionism and positive affect. I'm presuming the indirect effect through flourishing will be statistically significant, but I have to test that first. So next, step four, Sobel test or bootstrapping in order to test the indirect effect for statistical significance. And it can be as simple as using a web page calculator in order to execute the Sobel test. However, there are also recommendations to use bootstrapping as a superior test over the Sobel test, but that would have to be executed in a program, and in SPSS there is syntax available to test the indirect effect via bootstrapping. I'm going to show you both methods. So in order to get the web page calculator, just write Sobel test calculator into a search engine and you'll see a top one come up by KJ Preacher. It's a good one. So click on Sobel Test Calculator. You can just scroll down to this first table here and what it's asking for are the unstandardized beta weights associated with the indirect effect A and B. And I estimated those A and B right here. So that's what it's asking for. So I'm going to input 0.197 
and B, the estimate between flourishing and positive affect, 0 0.430, 0 0.430, and that's also asking for the standard errors, and I have those as well. 0 0.052, 0 0.052, and 0 0.028. 0 0.028. Then I click on calculate and the Sobel test right here, Sobel test is associated with a Z value of 3.68 and a standard error of 0 0.023 and a P value less than 0 0.05. In fact, it's P equal 0 0.0002, P less than 0 0.001. Therefore, I can conclude that the indirect effect between self-oriented perfectionism and positive affect via the intermediary variable of flourishing is statistically significant. I haven't actually estimated the point estimate of the indirect effect, but it's simply the product of A and B. So let me just calculate that right now. 0.197 times 0 0.430, and that equals 0 0.085. That is the estimate of the indirect effect between self-oriented perfectionism and positive affect through flourishing. And the Sobel test is suggesting that that point estimate of 0 0.085 is statistically significant, p less than 0 0.001. So that's the Sobel test. Overall, that is a mediation analysis with one mediator using the Sobel test to estimate the statistical significance associated with the indirect effect which was estimated at 0 0.085 on the basis of multiplying the 0.197 and the 0 0.430. Now the direct effect between self-oriented perfectionism and positive affect was not found to be statistically significant on the basis of the multiple regression that I conducted. Recall that that had a p-value of 0.573, the direct effect of 0 0.017. This implies that the effect of self-oriented perfectionism is only a good thing. It only has a potential influence on people's optimism and happiness and well-being if it facilitates them to be productive and feel like they're getting on with their work and doing well and accomplishing things. That is how self-oriented perfectionism can potentially have an influence on positive affect. It does not have a direct effect on positive affect. It's only through the feeling of achieving things and being productive. Now, as I mentioned in the textbook, not everyone's in love with the Sobel test. Some people argue that bootstrapping should be used in order to estimate the statistical significance of an indirect effect. And to some degree, I'm open to that argument, especially considering that bootstrapping doesn't assume any level of normality. So how to do a bootstrap analysis to test the indirect effect for statistical significance? You need to get the syntax that I make reference to in the textbook. So in the textbook, I provide a link and once you have this syntax file open in SPSS, you need to include a data file that has only the variables of interest. So click New, Data, and you want to copy three variables only into that data file. You want the dependent variable, put that variable first, put the independent variable, and put the mediator third. So dependent variable, which is positive affect, so copy and paste. And now I want the independent variable, which is self-oriented perfectionism. Copy and paste. And now I need the hypothesized mediator, which is flourish. Copy and paste. Once you have the three variables necessary to conduct the bootstrapped approach to evaluating the statistical significance of the indirect effect, you need to change the variable names and change them to the following. So the dependent variable should be called y var. The independent variable should be called x var. And the mediator should be called m var. So with those name changes, save your data file. Once you have the syntax file open, you'll want to run it to put it into SPSS's memory. So go to Run and All. And that has put it into SPSS's memory. And now you need one line of code 
in order to execute the bootstrap analysis to test the indirect effect for statistical significance. And that line of code is in the paper from which this program was created. So it's called Sobel. So just copy that, control C, and then in the new syntax file, click paste. And you have to change this boot equals Z to a particular value that you want. So do you want 1,000 replications, 2,000? So let's put 1,000 replications and then run. And SPSS has executed the bootstrap analysis. And you can see the program first reports the descriptive statistics and the Pearson correlations. It even estimates the direct and total effects associated with the analysis, much like I did with SPSS. Importantly, it also calculates the indirect effect and the significance. Now this first row is the Sobel test. So this is the Sobel test that I already conducted. You can see that the Z value is 3.672. Well, that's exactly what I got here, 3.67, well, not exactly, 3.678. So very similar within rounding. And it's statistically significant, P equal 0 0.0002. Very similar, 0 0.0002. So that's the Sobel test. So you don't have to use the web calculator if you want to use the syntax. But the real value of the syntax is the bootstrapping. So here we've got the point estimate of 0 0.0849 which is what I calculated in the calculator within rounding, 0 0.0847, point estimate. And we can see that the 95% confidence intervals do not intersect with zero. The lower bound is 0 0.0375, and the upper bound is 0.1298. And because both of these are positive, and the point estimate is positive, I would declare that this point estimate is statistically significant. And because that point estimate of 0 0.0849 is the indirect effect associated with the mediation analysis, I again would conclude that there is statistically significant mediation taking place. And because the direct effect between the independent variable and the dependent variable is not significant, this is a case of full mediation. So those are the steps associated with conducting a mediation analysis with one mediator. Mediator, 